And now our next speaker, once again, Lori Grace from Trust Vote. Is it? Okay, so. Um, you could kind of lean it back more. How far is it? Going? Maybe. Well, I can also talk more. How about this? Hopefully, it'll stay there. Or what about moving the whole thing? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> is that a trip? That one over there? Is that one fun? That's good. That's good. Oh, no, no. Now, um, I don't really know about coordinating the slides. Um, can you help me? Oh, okay. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look at my slides so I know how to direct my talk. What? Or should I choose them from here or what? Okay. All right. What? You want me to pull it forward? Oh, I see what you mean. All right, good. What? Yeah, I can see it easily. Okay, so I was invited to talk for 15 minutes about the Trackenberg project in Humboldt County and also I, I want you to know it's connected with trustvote.org. But as I was writing up my talk, I realized that, um, that that's part of it, but there's actually a much bigger picture because I've been involved with election integrity issues since 2003, starting with Bev Harris and black box voting and the 2004 election and then moving into audit the vote and then moving into uh, dealing with Karl Rove and Mike Connell, a few of you perhaps know about it. And, and Bob, I want you to listen to me in the back. Thank you. <laughs> and um, also then uh, moving on to uh, dealing with the 2012 uh, election and, and the issues going on there. And, then, um, and also in 2010, finding the Trackenberg Project, which we championed. Uh, so, I will, um, I have some slides for different things. So one of the central things that's come to me is all our election systems have been, and I'm sure t most of you would agree, taken out of the hands of the people, so to speak, and are supposedly run by experts in machines and very, very large corporations, okay, that are really committed to their pr proprietary material, all right? And what I want to say about the Trackenberg Project and also what Virginia Martin is doing in Columbus County um, is it brought it back to the people. And what I want to say is we have a country that's fraught with distrust and anger and, and divisiveness. And part of it is because we can't trust our elections. There are many people who believe that Trump was falsely elected by, by um, you know, manipulations in our elections and the Russians notwithstanding, but let's also bring forward that there couldn't be American insiders. And there have been American insiders for years, all right? Okay, Mike Connell. <laughs> Mike Connell, if you look him up someday, was an American insider, okay? And, uh, and we've had Karl Rove as an American insider, and he was working in, in very subtle ways that I can't go into in much deep depth right now. But it's connected also to very large companies. Di Diebold, now Dominion, uh, Hard InterCivic, uh, uh, ESNS, uh, Sequoia, Dominion, all of these companies that hold their material proprietary, all right? So when we bring back a uh, election to the people, when they are counting the votes and putting it on open source, we are bringing the heart back to our democracy, to our election system, all right? So 
with that, I wanted to uh, go to my next slide, uh, just to bring forward the Trackenberg system. And that's, oh, it's on there, yeah, okay. Um, this is a picture of Carolyn Cernich from Humboldt County. And in 2010, I got the idea that I want to support the good guys in our election system. I want to support uh, registrars that really care about their population. And uh, if I had known you, Virginia, I would have included you on yet another prize and fl flown you over. Um, and uh, we, uh, we, we gave her the prize, and then also we gave another one to uh, um, Freddie Oakley and, to and Tom Stanionis, because that particular time, they decided to do the same thing as the Trackenberg system. So I want to uh, go to that. Um, this way, the next slide. This was a copy of our invitation to join uh, the award ceremony. And you know, it's hard work being in a registrar. So if you honor your registrars and your election officials for taking a stand to support American democracy, to support trust building, hooray, okay? And, and we need more of this. And I have to tell you, when I was hearing about the new system in California, where you drop your little ballot off somewhere in some voting center, I worry about that human element being lost. Okay? Just my worry. Um, and um, I, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, we'll go to the next slide. This is uh, Carolyn Cernich with uh, Tom Stanionis on the back because Freddie Oakley wasn't able to make it, Mitch Trackenberg, and Kevin Collins, who's a commercial fisherman, who approached Carolyn about, about uh, creating more um, integrity in their elections. Now, what is, the, what is the thing that happens with election officials that some are so hostile to people inquiring about things and some are friendly. Well, in the case of Humboldt County and Carolyn Cernich, she's elected by the voters. She is responsible to the voters, okay? She is not responsible to her superior. Well, I mean, Kelly Sanders is a new one now because Carolyn's retired, but Kelly Sanders is responsible to her voters. The elections, the registrars, the, the devising of the election is brought back to the people. So when Diebold really screwed up and 197 votes were missing, Carolyn didn't back up because she's kind of afraid, oh my God, I can't have something happen on my watch. You know, she didn't do that. She said, oh, that's very interesting. Let's take a look at it together. You know, I care about you and your votes so much, I want to look at it. And she didn't need to report to the supervisor up there that was going to slam her for having a mistake, you know? And uh, Jan, you brought forward that in your state, you know, except that you had a good boss, you know, you can be slammed for problems with your election, okay? Fast. You might lose a promotion, perhaps you might lose your job. So no wonder registrars are sitting with their arms folded. No wonder they're saying, okay, back up, in California, you have to back way up or you have to look through a glass to see how things are being counted in some areas, okay? So no wonder they're defensive, all right? So I always look at the psychological aspects of, of voting and, and, and I want to say that I really support more hand counting. I support ballot images if it's done correctly so it'll wash away the things that Philip Stark brought forward. I, I support different things, okay? Because we have such a big country that's so diverse, we're gonna need a number of different things. And what we need is a population that is concerned and we need to have election officials that say, come on over, come on over. You know, because you know what Carolyn says now? And I mean, or said now, and with the recount, they are not, um, they've never had a request for a recount. Virginia Martin has never had a request for a recount. Why is that? Because it's transparent, and transparency, <laughs> transparency builds trust, all right? 
and with this vote by mail thing where you drop your little ballot in a slot and you walk home, I'm not sure that that's going to build trust at all, okay? So we have to find some workaround, you know, with um, really bringing in citizens, really having transparent elections. So I just want to bring forward the other thing. So what is the real problem about putting our elections out of the people into the hands of corporations. Okay, I have been involved with this since 2003. We were trying to stop Diebold and everything, and so we'll now we'll move to, uh, well, one more thing on the Trackenberg Project, and now we'll move to 2012. Okay, that's the next slide, by the way. So Bob and I, and also uh, Brett Kimberlin and protectourelections.org, we have dealt with the huge expanse of the American election empire, all right? And this was in 2012, and we knew that the thing was screwed. You know, Mike Connell in 2008, he, he was just one person we were tracking, and, and he was working with Rove and Cheney to change the election results for 2004, and we, try, we stopped him in 2008. But by the time it got to be 2012, oh my God, you know, the Rove empire has expanded, all right? And we had to use... Um, strategies, I, um, Bob was setting up, uh, we both discovered with Hart InterCivic that they had put um, their, uh, uh, they had put in uncertified software that was going to yield the same result at exactly the same time as 2004. And Bob set up a, uh, a lawsuit. I went to Washington to talk about it, to present at the press club. And yes, we got some of the information out. And there's also uh, some things that happened with Anonymous, which I will not go into right here. But uh, there, we had to use massive ways to, to stop this thing, okay? If you notice here, there are places all over the country. And let me remind you, Mitt Romney and HIG Capital, he's the major stockholder in HIG Capital. And where is HIG Capital's headquarters? The Cayman Islands. All right? Where is Dominion's headquarters? Toronto. Where is Seidel's headquarters? Barcelona. Okay? And these people are involved in counting our votes. This is very serious. We need to bring it back to the people. We need to bring it back to all of you and your friends. Okay? All right, so. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I will uh, now, um, oh, well, actually, that, that's 2016, okay? All right, so in 2016, and uh, deal, I, I got involved with the, with the manipulations that were happening with Bernie Sanders and uh, Hillary Clinton. That's another story. But we started looking at Seidel, okay? And like Virginia Martin has to send some of her stuff to Seidel, you know, but thank God you have this hand count, all right? So Seidel, and I don't know why two of the things are blackened out. Seidel in Barcelona bought SOE, which is the election system. See up at top there? And SOE is, is running many elections in California and in, uh, well, well San, San, all of San Jose and also um, uh, Virginia has to send election results to Seidel. And Seidel was all over New York State in many places. And ESNS was more in, the, in the, um, Manhattan. But um, anyway, what I'm saying is that Seidel is very related to the defense industry, to the CIA, that's over on the left-hand side, and uh, Carrier IQ, which is a company that can turn on your cell phone and record you, and just different when it's off, when you think it's off, different things like this. So again, I'm trying to demonstrate to you why it's important that we bring elections back to the people, okay? And um, I, in my view, with the Trump election, we didn't succeed. With the two Obamas, we succeeded, hooray. 
But, you know, this is getting worse because technology is expanding all the possibilities, all right? So, um, let's see, what's next? I guess we can move next. So, uh, this was an, uh, an article that, that, uh, that Bob showed in his free press um, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, talked about election fraud. You can find it by going there. We were also tracking Seidel in 2012. Uh, they were running from us. Um, the, uh, but uh, this was just more recently. And it, basically what Seidel does is it can control election night reporting, training of registrars, election vote counts, uh, database, all of these kinds of things if they sign up for it in a big way. And so, you know, what a great way to massage your, your voting system if you have some people like that who would like to have something. And um, so anyway, I will now go to the next slide. So, uh, earlier last year, um, I learned about Fraction Magic, yet another thing designed by our voting uh, company called Dominion. Dominion in Toronto, okay? Now, one thing I didn't tell you is every time it's an election year, my computer is attacked by thousands of viruses. All right, I had Norton Security. At one point, I had that one that roars like a lion. Kaspersky, I had different ones. They couldn't even handle it. I had to completely take my computer off. And, and, and I am also finding Bob, Bob has had to redo his computer. Brett Kimberlin at Protect Our Elections has to do our computer. And I want to let you know, as soon as I investigated the CIDL website, I had virus after virus coming on. How do I know that? Because my growl system was coming, coming over. Virus, 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 virus. I could barely get to my search function because <laughs> there were so many things coming through. But they were finally overwhelmed. And I had to completely disconnect from the internet. And <laughs> so I just want to let you know that this is something else that goes on here. And I know that Big Brother has been watching me ever since Karl Rove, OK? And I know that there have been deaths involved, and I've tried to take, you know, a back stance, but, whew. Okay, so I wanted to mention to you another thing, uh, just to let you know, the Trackenberg Project. Um, I funded it, and also Threshold funded it. And Threshold Foundation is a foundation that I helped start in 1982. There isn't something on it. And I... Um, I got involved with the election integrity uh, funding circle in oh, 2005 or something like that. And I want you to know that they, they, they disbanded after Rove was, uh, uh, they were uh, investigating the board members and they were afraid of losing their 501c3. And also when Glenn Beck, the, one of the people leading, uh, listening to Glenn Beck decided that Threshold and Tides Foundation was a terrorist organization and he was stopped by the highway patrol bringing bombs in. Okay? That's right here in California, right here in the Presidio. All right? So then they said, help, help, we're getting out of this election business, all right? I still continued on my own, okay? Uh, but I just wanted to say that um, uh, they're back on now and they're back on with the new system and I'm going to dialogue with them because some people here perhaps want funding. I've already chosen that I, I get to promote two projects and John Brakey's Audit AZ is one that I will do. But, yeah. Um, and I will propose that to their foundation as well. But um, I, I wanted to let you know that just generally. And... Um, uh, so anyway, let's see where I'm going on. All right, so I listened to, if you could just go back to the other picture. So I learned about fraction magic, okay? I learned that, and it was mentioned here, your votes can be decimalized. Your vote can be worth one half. Your vote is worth 10, okay? All right? And what is the way that we can get to this? 
right now it's ballot images, okay? And so those ballot images are important. Of course, the paper ballots are great too. You know, they can't do it on a computer, but I, I'm just letting you know. So I went to what I learned from Bev, because I know her very well, is I learned that Dominion admitted that they designed Fraction Magic. All right? So immediately, that caught my interest. Bango. So then, uh, now on the next slide, I go to defendthevote.com, and this is a video, which you can't watch, of Dr. Eric C Coomer saying very proudly about how he created Fraction Magic, okay? All right? So what happened when I went to um, that site, all of a sudden, virus upon virus upon virus upon virus, and CIDL, um, I'd already gotten viruses from them, but even more, and I didn't know that. I just knew that I was having a flood of viruses. And, and um, uh, later, my webmaster, when he took all, away everything from my computer and disconnected everything, it came from Defend the Vote twice. So look, if you are Eric Coomer, if you admit that you let anybody into the data administration room because you think it's, that you think is appropriate, if somebody's putting it on their website, if you admit that you do fraction magic and then all of a sudden Bev Harris is coming in alerting people to this thing, you might just, because there wasn't anything, anybody else putting it up about Eric Coomer, Bev Harris wasn't doing it, you might just send some viruses her way at defendthevote.com. And there was a Norton security warning on it, but I was like, oh my God, wrapped to know about this. So I clicked on it, so I got a flood of viruses. All right, so I'm just letting you know how Big Brother operates and why we really have to get back to the people, okay? Back to all of you. So, um, I'll see, I, oh, all right, so, John is going to show you about the ESNS um, 200 and the 850 that can do ballot images. I guess they both can. All right. And this is, um, this is um, from Dominion, located in Toronto, as I mentioned, saying that they do images too. But the issue now is that a lot of registrars like to destroy the images. So if we were going to use this as a strategy to create more safety in our elections, we have to get the registrars on our side. And we might have to create ways that they can feel more safe, preferably not always appointed, hopefully more, more elected. And, and if not, at least some way that we can say, look, it's, if something goes wrong on your side, it's not necessarily you at all, and we as voters want to support you in it so you won't be so afraid of us looking into your stuff, you know? And we want to tell your supervisor that, all right? I mean, that's what we've got to do, and I'd love to see more elected ones. So, um, so we, can, we can do that because um, if they destroy the ballot images, we're in trouble. So what's the next slide? I don't even remember. Oh, okay, so this is my final slide. John Brakey has his thing out there and he's gonna talk to you guys for about, um, you know, like a half an hour and, uh, and you can learn more about ballot images and about actually the fight to save them. And in the case of Bob, where he had a chance to look into ballot images in Cleveland, they didn't even turn on the system that makes the ballot images. So, you know, as I said, there's a lot of very tangled psychology in all of this. And we really need to find a way to work with the registrars. So with that, I'm, I had my two minutes sign. <laughs> And if anyone wants more information on the Trackenberg system, I've talked at length to the new software person there, and we can, they can help you. And Lori, I don't have a question, but what I want to do is thank you mm -hmm. from the bottom of my heart <laughs> <laughs> thank you. for the generosity 
of spirit and reaching down deep in your pockets and funding this movement on so many different levels. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. <laughs> I, I definitely story. work for love. Yeah, quick, <laughs> quick story. Last year, folks, um, uh, a number of us in Ballots for Bernie, um, what we were were a group of Bernie supporters that helped to organize. And I want Addie Olvera to stand up and wave your hand. Okay? And if you were a Bernie supporter, I want you to come and I want you to give this Latina heroine a big hug Woo! before you leave today. Because I've got a big mouth, but she's got a very big brain. And she organized Contra Costa County down to the minute details. And we used what she did in Contra Costa County. And we organized online through Facebook 58 counties that were on the ground in two weeks in a ballot count observation initiative. It was amazing that we got there in two weeks. And I want my fellow delegate, Eric, to stand up real quick. You guys have seen that Eric is a technological wizard. Again, I've got the big mouth, but Eric's got the big brain. And Eric helped us develop a website that we were able to organize this entire um, ballot count initiative. We've got so many people in the room that worked with us for Ballots for Bernie. What you're seeing happen today in this conference came out of last year's conference when we were flat broke. Uh, let, me, let me say that again. We had no money. We wanted to organize a national conference. We had six weeks to get it done. We worked on this for about four months, folks. We had six weeks to get it done last year. Lori came to our rescue. <laughs> She flew in Bob, she flew in John Brakey, she flew in Paul, she flew in a couple of other speakers, she put them up at her house in Tiburon, she got them to our conference. We couldn't have done it last year without you, Lori. You helped us plant the seed that is going to grow into a national movement. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Wow. How do you follow that? Um, you know, because it's trust vote, I really did have a question about um, there was um, Do you want to, to come? there was a lawsuit that was supposed to be filed, and I was wondering if trust vote knows whatever happened yes, to I that know with exactly Cliff, what it is. Cliff Arnenbeck. I uh, I and um, Cliff Arnenbeck was stalling and stalling and stalling and stalling, and in, and I was very concerned about the primary votes in for Bernie and Hillary in July, and uh, in uh, you know the primary in June. Yeah. I think our primary was really screwed up, and, and so, so I and Bob decided to put forward the one against Edison Media Research to get the raw data, and uh, that is on our website. Okay. Um, what happened was, and I put up some of the money for it, well, the money for it, and, um, and we started it, and Bob, maybe Bob, you want to come here for a second? Do you, you put some, uh, you know, we put in the arguments um, why we wanted this uh, lawsuit, then, then they put their arguments back, and uh, then Bob put a counter, and then we were... You know, the, the law firm that we were referred to makes $650 million a year. So as a David with a Goliath, this was a Goliath that was a little right. beyond us. So, Bob, why don't you say any details? Uh, again, the, uh, the one that Cliff Arnobeck proposed never went forward. Uh, but again, I talked a little about this yesterday. We sued uh, Edison Research Group, and we argue they're a state actor is that we, we believe they need to disclose their methodology. Uh, they do this overseas and they're one of the most accurate uh, polling companies in the world. And they're incredibly accurate as long as it isn't a battleground state. Uh, and they've also agreed they get special, they exchange special data with the Secretary of State in Ohio who I sued. They get to be outside certain polls. They exchange data. 
but part of their assumption is no matter how implausible their numbers are, they're gonna wait and change things to say that no matter what the winning numbers are, if they say Hillary Clinton's gonna win by one point and she loses by 10, and it's absolutely improbable, they will accept the official numbers uh, even, I mean, sometimes they're good numbers. Remember in 04, uh, Clyde, Ohio, with 131% voter turnout, came up with some really good numbers for Bush. So that was part of our suit. The, the courts said, look, they're a private contractor. You're right, we wish they would disclose this stuff, but they're protected and their methodology is proprietary. That's why we've got to destroy all this proprietary, secret software, firmware, hardware, and this methodology and return it to the people. So we lost there, uh, but uh, you know we've gone forward in, uh, in other areas right. and I'm prepared to sue again. Right, and I, I just wanna say one thing that I forgot, because I want you to know about SOE, which was a higher up on the CITL thing. I sent Bob to investigate SOE in, in Florida, there was no sign on the door. There was, uh, there was a tiny little stickum on the elevator. You went up and there was no sign on the door up high. And it was a, a non-transparent door. And when he went in, there was about a 400 pound guy in. I mean, he, he only got in because he followed someone who swiped. So there was no sign. This is SOE that counts a lot of our votes, all right? He said, a big 400 pounder said, you know, what are you doing here? And they, we, and Bob was coming in the pretense to organize the Green Party campaign. We don't do campaigns, that's not true. Um, and we just do government work, work for the government, private work for the government. So I'm just letting you know this is the kind of company that manage, takes our votes and it's that's why it's again really important so I so, yeah. okay <laughs> all right good hi Lori um, you made me remember something about being a ballot count observer and I wanted to share with that with yeah you and a, two other things after that um, getting involved with your county registrar triggered this we started you know, right after the primary. Literally, next day, people voted. Next day, overnight, we were up to 4 o'clock in the morning talking about what we had to do. Eric trying to develop this website and people calling other people that they knew, launching a social media platform to get a hold of everybody that would be willing to volunteer. One of the learned many things observing the count. But one of the most important things I learned was you don't have to wait till election to start observing your county registrar. Hmm. Right now, they're preparing for 2018. They're already, mm -hmm. you know, choosing their budget, deciding if they're going to get new machines, um, choosing the printer, if they have to change their print machine. Um, they're choosing whether they're going to decide to fax the numbers to this SOS or send them over the internet. They're Deciding which contractor is going to deliver the ballots to each poll site. You know, there's so much elements of things. Which building they're going to store your ballots and what's going to take an image at every vote by mail. You know, maybe they'll use something they've been using for 10 years or decide to change that. So, one of the simple ways you can start doing is, maybe you're not interested in getting on a commission, but you do want to start asking your county registrar, what step are they now on? getting ready for 2018. If they're saying, well, right now we're going out trying to recruit poll workers and volunteers and we're going into the high schools. We're trying to you know, get solicit more high school who can involve. Okay, what's your process? Ask 50 questions. You know, make sure you get enough time with their secretary to ask all the questions you want. If they tell you we only have 15 minutes, well, what do you have a week out? Because I need more time than that. Okay, because you're gonna get the push they're going to want to get you five minutes, and that's all. One time we wanted to do a press conference, and we invited the ROV uh, to come out and speak to us. We waited like two hours. And I think they sent someone else to do it for us. 
do it with us. So there's a weight, but you're not going to get the respect you deserve unless you push, 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 stick to it. And you might cry a few times, but you have us to cry with. Yeah. Yeah. Two more things. Sorry. Hang on, I want to I want to say a big amen to that right now. That that's sort of come up a couple of times this weekend in different ways. Yeah. Number one, not only do they have to tell you what they're going to be, those procedures have to be in writing. You cannot hold public officials to make sure they follow the procedures unless those procedures are in writing. And that it can't be a transparent procedure if it's not in writing because they, they could just be doing anything they want and saying, oh, well, this is procedure and you have no way to know if it is, is or isn't. So that not, yeah, yes to what you said and also, you know, if they don't, can't tell you the procedure in writing, it doesn't exist. They can't just make it up and talk about it. Right. And the other thing, that I, again, an amen to what you're saying, the election officials need to get to know you between elections. At the late September Wisconsin Elections Commission meeting where they decertified the Optech Eagle, we had a couple of us sitting in the front row in the observers, and I swear we, there was a certain point, I could feel it in the room, we didn't have to say anything. We were sitting there watching, they knew who we, er, we were, they knew what we believed, they knew what we'd told them in the past, and when they were asking questions and discussing, I know that they were <laughs> very aware of us people they knew sitting in the front seat. And again, if you don't get to know them between the elections, you don't get that kind of benefit. So again, I just wanted to reinforce everything yeah. you said. Thank you so much. Yeah. My two other things. I um, triple it. Money. Huh. Money. Lori's not the only one that can give. Other people can too. And we've been talking about two things that are really important. 2018 elections are happening in October. We're getting ready in October for November. I mean, we're getting ready now, right? But the heavy push happens a month before. That's when we have our conference. We know all of you don't want to be sitting here. You want to be knocking on doors. So we've proposed, we started talking about in our planning group, do we push this conference out again? Move it in to like March or April. Because we need to get ready for 2018. So please give us your feedback. Go on our page and tell us what month works for you. If we had to reach out to you and your friends again, what, what kind of information you want us to bring. Because... If Lori says, I found someone to build the tool and the curriculum to take to your indivisible group or your Bernie group or your draft Bernie group, because this is about every party needs to be paying attention. Every individual political group needs to be paying attention to this. So if we need the tools. That's what I'm proposing we do part two. Well, it should be our third, our third conference, right? But we need more tools. There's videos from the first conference that are going to educate you on this. Now you have these videos to also watch, share them with people, and now let's bring the tools to the people. We've gotten some here, but we definitely need more structure. I've heard over and over visuals. We have artists in California that can put this in simple terms for our people in our groups. Third, Lucy, I, Peter, and Martha participated in a meeting with Hustle. Okay, Hustle's a texting group that and this is not a plug for them because we might go with something else, but this is a conversation with them. They're texting people, getting people involved, and not everybody does social media, and not everybody does email anymore. I can't get through my email, there's so much spam. But I pay attention to all my texts. And because you know, you never know, something's wrong with my kid. You can't, you know, that's the way people report stuff to me now. So. I've been watching what Together We Will, Indivisible, and Bay Resist is doing with Hustle. They need to bring election issues to these testing, texting programs. They're using voter rolls with people who provide their cell phones and asking voters who already vote, who are paying attention to the issues, who look at ballot slates and stuff like that, to you know, help protect laws in Texas or Virginia and Georgia, and we're hustling from California. But we're not hustling for things happening in California, like AB 840. So they need funding to help build a platform for us so we can text every voter California. We need something like that, right? Because I'm hustling 100 people, which means I'm texting 100 people in less than five minutes. 
just by watching my favorite show. I'm just sitting there, sending. And then I check 10 minutes later, and I see who's responded. It says, take me off your list. Oh, yes, I'm interested. Give me my script to call my senator. And then I give them the script. And all that language is built in for you. You just hit send and choose and send and choose language. We need something like that that helps us connect with people who are not on Facebook and who, not are, who don't check their email all the time. So thank you. And uh, thank you to our panel. Uh, we're going to be taking a five-minute break, but I just wanted to add to something real quick. So um, we're not just against, um, you know, bad machines and, and, and faulty process. We're also against apathy. There's actually a lot of people that, you know, spend more time worrying about if, like, a coupon took 59 cents off their groceries rather than if their uh, vote actually counted. So we got to make sure that people uh, understand that this is important and what we're doing is important, and you guys are going to be leading that fight to all your communities. Uh, thank you. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs>